Ah, how we all doing everyone? I hope you are keeping well out there. So, we've only got two more sleeps till the big man arrives with our presents. So tonight, as I said, I'd come out of a few minutes here and I decided what I would do is, I got a few of my AVO meters out the other day to make a silly little photo for my Instagram. And I thought we would have a look at some of them to see which of them are working and which of them are not. Now, I've got a couple of AVO 7s, which I don't use, of an AVO 40 that I don't use. Really, I only use the Mark 5 here. And I have a few other little bits and pieces. So, I was just going to see how that read with my uh, little voltage reference do for here. So, I thought we'd have a bit of fun with that. Hope you're all set for Christmas now. There's uh, only two sleeps left till the big man comes with the presents. So quite exciting. I hope I'm sure some of you out there have children that are looking forward to Mr. Claus coming with the presents. So it's all good. And uh, looks like the weather's going to be nice enough here for Christmas too. It's actually ten degrees out here at the minute. Uh, what it's ten past nine here in the evening right now. And it's just over ten degrees outside. So it's unseasonably warm for the time of year. And uh, it's dry as well. So we're doing we're doing well. So I'll give you a look at a few of these. Some of them are a little bit odd body, but um, one in particular is, is relatively rare here. And I'll probably show you that one first. Uh, so I'll bring the camera in as I do to give you a good look. So So here is the voltage reference. I've spoken about this before. It has an AD uh, 46. Is it a 46? No, I have it wrong. I think it's six AD 640 IC voltage reference IC in a TO3 metal case. Um, these boards were available on AliExpress a couple of years ago, fairly cheap. I haven't looked lately to see if they're still available or not. Uh, Texas Instruments haven't made the AD 648 for a long time. So all these um, voltage reference chips are scavenged from uh, second hand equipment or whatever. Obviously stuff goes out to China to be recycled or what have you. Um, and that's where they're getting the chips from. But they work quite well. Um, certainly good enough for this what I was going to do is I was going to send this off to someone that has you know maybe a five or six digit multimeter um, just to see how close it is but you know five volts is five volts or 4.9 or we'll see now um, so what I'll do is I'll tie in the little fluke 101 multimeter these are still available I think from China it, it is genuine fluke and the early ones had fluke in English here. But, and these are available. I think I paid 35 euros for this. But um, fluke got so upset with our Chinese subsidiary. Uh, selling these that, uh, for so cheap. That they made them put fluke. Uh, changed it, the writing to Chinese characters for fluke. But it is a genuine fluke. Uh, and it is genuine fluke. When you open them up and all everything is correct they're a very handy pocket meter and they're safe so i would recommend someone get one um you know because to get a meter of this size made by fluke that's reliable cheap um, and you can trust it it's quite good so the first meter i'll talk about then is this one here this one this is a fluke AVO 10 and these were made mainly for export and the article had this in the workshop for years and years it was sitting on a shelf he got it and but he didn't like it um, he just couldn't take it at the time he was using a Simpson 260 which is an excellent meter uh, Simpson are actually still going in the States and they're still making multimeters they're still making the 260 um, some tie in with the uh, American uh, military forces where you know a lot of their manuals and, and procedures will be would reference the 260 so they just keep making them and I believe they're owned by a, 
Native American uh, tribe. So I think they get a little bit of money off the government to, to help keep the business going. So they're an interesting crowd. So if you Google Simpson, you you can read all about them. Um, so the article anyway passed this on to me probably around 2009. Um, when I started getting really interested in uh, doing televisions and that. Um, he gave me this because I didn't have a proper multimeter as such. And um, I used it for years. I only stopped using it because it is kind of a rare meter. And the writing is starting to get quite faded on that. And I did drop it once or twice. Now it was already cracked here when I got it but I let it drop once or twice. It took it. It still works quite well. But um, I just sort of thought it was time to retire it. Give it an easy life. I dig it out now and again. What I like about this over the other Avos. Uh, is the one knob uh, selection and it's a nice big knob it's easy to grab and um, it's got plenty of ranges so it's a nice meter this one is that's the serial number here's the day 10th of October 1979 so what is it? it's just gone over 42 years old as you can see my solution here was a, a stack of uh, lithium coins and a few two cent coins I actually see a little bit of corrosion starting in there, so I'm gonna need to give it a bit of a clean. But um, yeah, it works away quite nicely. So that's him. So we'll see how he reads on the meter. Right, I have it hooked up. Let's switch on. We're on the 15 volt range here, and um, that would be 2.5 volts, 10 volts. It's not reading grey. 5 volts, it's a little bit shy, I suppose it's not too bad, let's see, 10 volts, yeah, sort of reading 9.79 9 9 I'd call that, and that should be 2.5 volts, and that's reading quite high in there, no, no, it's not, no, sorry, yeah, that's not too bad, let's go for 2.5 volts, on the six volt range, yeah, more or less spot on. It's a little bit low, but um, not bad, not bad at all. Certainly, it uh, would be within tolerance. So, I'm glad to see he's still working anyway. Um, it is quite a while since that one's in use. So, that's the AVO 10, um, a good meter like that a lot so I do like that one a lot let's dig another one out here's the AVO 40 now this was basically the electrician's version of the AVO A it's not as sensitive I think it's 500 ohms per volt if I remember rightly, it might say on the back of the scale plate. I don't see it there. Well, I'm sure it's on it somewhere. Anyway, I think these were 500 ohms per volt. And what year is this one? I'm not sure what year it is. I should, you should be uh, remember. I don't know how to date these ones. The other ones you can deal with after serial number, but um, I'm not sure. But it is a torn one, so it's at least late sixties anyway. I can't remember when torn took over Avo, but I think it was in the late sixties. Anyway, let's see if it reads at all or not, or is it anyway close? It 
see, we're on the 12 volt range. Let's put in. We're putting in 10 volts there. And where is she reading? Well, she's reading quite low indeed. I think the problem here is dirty contacts or loose contacts on the selector switch. Look at the way the, knob, the needle is pointer, should I say, is flying around. That requires further investigation. So there's problems with this one. I know it was working hard like the last time I used it, but um, the problem with these old meters is they do they are prone to oxidization in the contacts and and the little springs weakening and that. Uh, I have two Avo sevens. Now I know one of these doesn't do anything at all. Well, Jim, it's the other one, I think, not this one. I bought this at the NVCF a couple of years ago, and the only reason I bought it was I just loved the look of it. Now, you look closely at this one, and just you can notice how much use this meter has had. It's had a ridiculous amount of use. I'll just turn on the big light there so we can see it. Look at the wear. You know, look at the amount of wear here. Well, it's completely rubbed away from some old boy in a radio shop somewhere twisting this knob. It's completely wore away the face. Somebody treasured this meter. Totally treasured it. And probably paid an awful lot of money for it. And, and, and it was obviously their prized possession. And they probably used it for their whole career. You know, that looks like it's had 40 or 50 years of use. So that's the only reason I bought it. Now, the one thing to look out for when you're buying one of these. Let me show you. You hold it. They're balanced to be used horizontally. But the pointer shouldn't move a whole lot. It should stay near enough to zero. And you see how far the pointer goes up and I move it to an upright position. And then if I do this... See how far it moves? It shouldn't move that much at all. It should stay near enough on zero. And then it goes right off the other way. Now, this can indicate that the meter has had a fall. And the balance of the movement has been upset. And on this I'd say it's been upset quite greatly. However, this one I know does give half decent readings. Still. So... Well, 10 volts there we are and funny enough it reads more or less spot on Nine point nine nine, and it just overshoots a little bit over the mark, but that's well within tolerance of one percent of full scale. Let's go for. Two point five, just a little bit under on the two point five, and then five. More or less bang on, so he's spot on. Well within tolerance, which is amazing when you look at the the amount of use that it's gotten. Probably took a tumble more than once. One of the other things you can tell that it's had a fall is there should be a little disc here. But it fell that hard that the disc fell off the pointer. If I get the other AVO7 here, you can see this one still has its little disc on the pointer. So that's an incredible meter. I didn't buy it to use it or anything. I just thought... I had so much character in that I thought it was a nice piece and I think it was three or four pounds so I said I'd give him a little retirement home this one if I remember correctly doesn't do anything at all and I haven't looked into it yet um, 
I may do. But I couldn't see myself using a Model 7, to be honest with you. Um, so we're on DC, and we're on the 10 volt range. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't uh, read anything at all. So we need to look into that. And I think I checked it with, uh, oh no, I'll tell you, I think the batteries are still in it as well. That was something I, I, I only got this a couple of months ago, so I don't have it all that long. Again though, got here more as a curiosity than a actual walking meter. Ah yeah, you can see the, the old batteries are still in it. And um, I probably should take them out. Well, they're not going to come out too handy. Come on, they're stuck together. Come on. No, that's a job for another day. Anyway, so that's that one. He's not walking at all at the minute. Then we come to this. So I have three Avo 8. Three marks. This is the Mark 3, Mark 4, Mark 5. The Mark 5 is the one I use all the time. I just find it a little, I find the knobs a little bit easier on the fingers. You can see these have a nice slot that you can grab and twist. And it's a little bit lighter as well. And um, area ones are quite heavy. And you have this, knot, you grab it on the edge. Not bad, but I think the other one's just a little bit easier. Um, on the on the fingers, so we'll try this one on the ten volt range. And he reads spot on. We're nine point nine eight on the fluke, and you can just see we're just below the ten volt mark there on that. We'll go to five. There's five. Spot on. And two point five. Bang on. No issues with him. The only thing that doesn't work on this one, this has had a massive overload on the arms range at some stage. A massive overload. And um, where it's actually melted the wire on inside. So it doesn't work on the arms range. I didn't get to the bottom of it yet. But it does work on all the other ranges. Just the arms range isn't working. So that's the Mark III. I only got the Mark III because I wanted a Mark III. Basically, um, I might end up with one from each stable at some stage. Um, Mark 2 and a Mark 1 as well. Um, they say the Mark 3 was the best one. So we'll go to 10 volts DC. 2.5 volts. Now, of course, we shouldn't check. Yeah, we are zeroed. We are zeroed. This is the Mark 4. And you don't see many Mark IVs around, and I'll explain why dust in a minute. As you can see, a little bit low on the 2.5 volt. Let's go 10. Yeah, a little bit low on 10 as well. Mm, bang on on 5. So, there's a pole piece on the magnet on the movement that you can adjust. And as they get older, sometimes the magnets get a little bit weaker. And you can adjust it, it's like a little uh, magnetic shunt. And it's just a piece of iron uh, or steel with a screw on it, and you can move, slide it along. Um, and it just helps the linearity of the scale. So, like you can be bang on here, but you can be out down here and out up here, and you know, it's a bit like convergence on a telly. It's, it, there's a lot of fiddling around with it. I wouldn't fall out with it, it's close enough. Um, for valve work again I don't use the Mark 4 and, um, this works in all the ranges and it's quite good the reason why you don't use it and why you don't see many of these around is because AVO were getting into the space age and plastics and things like that and this is their first go at a plastic case and you can see 
this thing has been is like Humpty Dumpty it's been smashed quite a few times I was given this and it was smashed in pieces and I'd load it up but um, the case is incredibly fragile and any sort of will knock at all and they'll break so it's been glued up quite a few times um, quite a few of these were sent back to AVO um, for overhaul and they were rehoused in Mark V plastic cases so it was a problem that they were aware of and they weren't in production for too long this is the Mark V um, this is the one I use all the time um, one thing I noticed with this though is if you look at the pointer you can see that the pointer is slightly bent to the right from here to here just a slight little bend that way it must have got an overload at some stage but other than that it's working perfectly I use it all the time it also has a stack of lithium coin cells in it and they've remained stable they're the only way to go I wouldn't bother with the uh, BLR121 uh, replacement batteries so Five volts, two point five, ten. She's a hundred percent. Great meter. So I use that all the time. That's me, me daily driver, as they would say. I've got two Avo Mark Fours here. One I know is good, and the other is not so good. I think this is the not so good one. I don't know if it works at all or not. go 10 volts ah yeah I see me problem with this one there's crap in the movement yeah yeah Oi. so that's what was wrong with that one the other one on the other hand I think is okay let's try this one There, making a liar to me now. Oh wait, here we go. Mm, he's not too good either. He's overshooting quite badly. There's a uh, four volts on the 2.5 volt range. Ten. There's five is registering already. Okay. Not to have a look at him too. Problems there. So there's almost all my AVO meters. I have two AVO 12 automotive meters as well, but they're not just a hand. I said I'd leave the, the, the most special one to last. Um, this is an AVO miner from 1937. So, in its box, it's in used condition, I would describe it. Here's one of the original leads. You can see it's seeing better days. Um, someone would have treasured this as well. Probably bought it for checking HT batteries on radios and doing little things like that. It's in quite nice condition. I believe it takes an N cell. So, we suppose we can see, will it read on the 6 volt range? So, so we have 5 volts coming out at the minute. Let's see what she read on the 6 volt range. So. Well, it's bang on. Let's look at that. Bang up to 5 volts. Let's try 2.5. I wonder, can we see that on the camera? Let's go in a bit of a close up here. I know it's a little bit blurry in here, so bear with me. And it's 2.5 volts. Bang on. That's quite incredible for the machine that was built in 1937. 5 volts. Wonderful. 
I don't intend on doing anything with this either. I, I, I did look into maybe putting a new dial glass in it and doing things. But I think it has the lived in look and it's the character of the machine. And really, when I seriously stop and think about this for a minute, I'm never going to use this in a daily setting in the workshop. It's not going to happen. Um, but I think it's a very cute little thing. And, um, you know, to have a multimeter that's over eight years old, I think it's special. So I put, keep him safe in his little box tucked away. Um, if I ever get a cabinet to display these things, and I, he will take pride of place. So that's where I'm at. you found that slightly enjoyable and um, we hope I hope to get another video out tomorrow night tomorrow night's Christmas Eve and I'll be talking to you then and seeing you and we'll have a maybe we might have a little Christmas drink or something here and we'll see how things go so until then I hope you enjoyed looking at my Avo meters and um, they're just the Avo meters I have, of course, as you're aware, I have many other multimeters here too, probably too many. But um, I don't think you can have too many multimeters as such, can you? Take care out there. Good luck for now, and all the best. Bye-bye.